Well, we're now starting to hear just how horrific the conditions were for the Israeli hostages who were held captive by Hamas. One little girl who's now been released is nine-year-old Emily Hand. Her father, Thomas, told CNN that since she's returned to him, she's more hollowed out, more timid and has been afraid to speak louder than a whisper. Shocking, disturbing part of meeting her was... Um, she was just whispering. Mm. I couldn't hear her. I thought she was in the tunnels, but she wasn't in the tunnels. They were actually f fleeing from house to house. She doesn't like it to be referred to as Gaza. She says the kufsa, the box. So you have to say, like, how long were you in the box? The kufsa. She said a year. Um, so, apart from the whispering, that was like uh, a punch in the guts. He said that when she came back, she'd forgotten how to be comforted. She cried until her face was red and blotchy while covering herself up under the covers of the bed. As you heard, she said she thought she'd been gone for a year, not 50 days. He also spoke about how her face is now chiselled and it used to be healthy and chubby. Another released hostage, 12-year-old Eitan Yahalomi, was forced to watch the October 7 murder and massacre videos on repeat while he was held captive. Just let that sink in. Hamas forcing a 12-year-old to watch videos of the October 7 massacres on repeat. No, child, no child should ever, ever have to watch that. His aunt, Devorah Cohen, has done media interviews. She said that if the children cried, Hamas threatened them with rifles to shut them up, pointing a gun at the children when they cried. And that's why Emily Hand couldn't speak louder than a whisper. And when Eitan arrived in Gaza, just a 12-year-old, so when he was first kidnapped and taken to Gaza, he said that all the residents beat him. They all came out and beat him. Just a child. And yet the anti-Israel media has insisted that Hamas was apparently treating the hostages well. What a joke. Joining me now is former Israeli ambassador to Australia, Mark Soffer. Mark, thank you very much for joining me once again. What are we starting sure. to learn about these conditions, the environment that the hostages were held in, and how much does it upset you? Well, of course, you know, the upset is, is huge, uh, not just for me, but for the entire country. It's a sort of a blow uh, of the type that we never thought we'd have to imagine. And some of the stories you've uh, already mentioned, uh, Shari, but there are others. Uh, many of the children and certainly the elderly women have come out lice-ridden, uh, lice all over them and very dangerous and uh, difficult skin uh, conditions and diseases as a result of being held in filthy conditions under tunnels uh, for over 50 days. Uh, malnutrition has set in in a number of different cases, especially in children who have lost maybe 12, 15 kilos because they were fed with rice and stale pita. Uh, for this amount of time. Uh, you know, the stories that will continue to come out, and we're not even beginning uh, to think of, uh, because we don't know yet, the psychological damage uh, to, the, to the children, to the elderly. Uh, and, you know, there's still 155 um, hostages left there, including children, uh, and uh, including a little baby, actually, still 10 months old. Uh, mm. it's, it's frightening. It's frightening what uh, humanity, what bestiality some members of the human race or whatever you want to call them uh, can reach. I know it never ceases to shock that there are humans capable of this level of cruelty and evil. That 10-month-old baby you speak about, his name, Kefir Bibas, we learnt uh, just yesterday that, that the baby, his four-year-old brother, Ariel, their parents, had been handed over to another Palestinian terrorist group. Um, you know, we don't know how many of the remaining 155 hostages are actually in the control of Hamas and how many have been farmed off to other terror groups or were captured by other terror groups like Palestinian Islamic Jihad in the first place. What are, you know, the deals that are being done at the moment, that's just with Hamas. So these other groups aren't adhering to the deals, they're not agreeing to the release of hostages. So what can be done to get these families home? 
Well, Hamas is is in control of uh, of all groupings there, and uh, they have to take charge, and it's in their the completely and utterly their responsibility uh, of taking those that they've actually sent out. Some, as you say, to the Islamic Jihad, others to criminal groupings uh, around Gaza, uh, and it's up to the Hamas immediately. Uh, not only to bring them back under their immediate control, but also to uh, release them and send them back to Israel uh, as they should be in the first place. Mm. It's uh, it, Hamas has control, they have responsibility, and they have the authority. Uh, uh, nobody else does, and they're not even allowing uh, the Red Cross to visit, despite the promises that they would. Not once has the Red Cross visited a single one uh, of the hostages being held in such subhuman conditions. The situation is, is really terrible and we're, we're very, very worried indeed. We're of course thankful that those who are out are out and it's a sort of, in that respect, a sort of a bittersweet. Families mm -hmm. are still plunged into half. The men, the, 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 the fathers are still under captivity. And as I said earlier, so many of the children still are and women. Well, we've seen, just very quickly before we go, we're seeing that the director of the CIA is now in Qatar trying to negotiate another deal that would see uh, the men, I mean, some of them are just uh, kids, really, you know, teenage boys, and also the soldiers released. Are you confident that any agreement will be reached that would be able to bring the Israeli soldiers um, and, and the males home? You know, uh, Shari, when you talk of Hamas uh, and confidence, uh, they're all they're, they're complete dichotomy one with the other. Uh, we're talking of a of a group of savage, of an organisation of savage thugs, uh, killers, murderers, rapists, you name it. So I think confidence is not a word that enters into any type mm. of uh, discourse here. But uh, uh, we still remain with our two uh, most crucial goals and the upper goals that we have in our mind, uh, which is, which are, of course, the uh, uh, return of all hostages, all of them. And we now know that there are three dead soldiers being held, three corpses being held uh, by Hamas. Uh, mm. And uh, the actual defeat of Hamas as a military force in the, in the Gaza Strip, so that we don't have them ruling the place again and going back, as they have promised, uh, to repeating their same uh, uh, 7th of October uh, horrific atrocities all over again. Mm -hmm. So these two these two remain, but I think we must work uh, to uh, try and uh, overturn every stone yeah. to bring back uh, everyone, including, of course, the men and uh, the soldiers. Absolutely. Mark Soffer, I really appreciate your insights as always. Thank you for joining us.